There's a wonderful situation about being a child of God. Wonderful situation about following God. Wonderful situation by worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Because God is always with you. And God will pour out his wisdom upon you. God will open your eyes. God will bring the revelations of life unto you. And you will function by the dictates of heaven. That is indeed if you accept him. We are going to read James chapter 3 verse 17. James three seventeen. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. There is wisdom and there is wisdom. In this world, we have all manner of things called wisdom. There is a kind of wisdom that, well, human wisdom that comes from age. Even at that, it's not common to everybody that is old. But some people, as they grow older, they have accumulated so much knowledge in life. They have had so much experiences. So by their experiences, they can come up with whatever we will call human wisdom. And that wisdom is right for them. It may not necessarily be right for the next generation because things have passed. What they held dear in their days may not be the same thing that the young person holds dear now. I can tell a story of my youth, but that will not be applicable to the youth today. The kind of things that we knew in our days are not the same things that are relevant to society today. That's human wisdom. It comes and goes. It changes with times and seasons. It changes with age and generations. But when you are talking about eternal wisdom, the wisdom that does not shake, that is not removable, even a drop of it does not change, that at all times is dynamic. Whatever generations will come, that same wisdom is applicable to all. That's the wisdom from God. And that wisdom has its own characteristics. It is different from the human wisdom. Human wisdom is applied according to the context. Human wisdom is applied according to what happens around. And it has efficacy according to that thing. But the wisdom of God is across the board. It has the same effects everywhere. It does not change. It does not yield to anything. Let's look at what it does. It says, first of all, pure. You know what that means? Human wisdom is not always pure. And that's the truth. Human wisdom is embedded in individual selfishness. The person is bringing the wisdom so that it will be advantageous to him, and that's right. Human beings seek the advantage. Everybody in this world, you are seeking your advantage. That is why you go for training. That is why you go to school. That is why you want to work harder so that you can gain an advantage. That is why you want to put in every effort to do something so that you can gain an advantage. That's human. So everything of the human being is, first of all, not based on purity. It is based on self-consideration. That's the way human beings function. You can't pretend about it. You, whatever you are doing and you are exerting everything, is because you are looking at self-consideration. How do I achieve this? How do I excel? Excel over what? Over others. Excel over what? Over this situation so that others are not like you. You are different. That's the human way, which makes that wisdom not pure. It is contaminated by self-consideration. The wisdom of God, peaceable. You see, the wisdom of man, when it requires war, you will fight the war. When it requires quarrel, you quarrel if you are the quarreling type. If it is the one that is prone to anger, if it requires anger, as a matter of fact, if he does not exercise the anger, he feels cheated. He feels he has done himself in. That's the wisdom of man. It can't be peaceable. The wisdom of God is gentle. We're talking about fights here and all that. The wisdom of man can't be always gentle. As a matter of fact, the wisest man will tell you how you take that step so that other person can be brought down. Is that gentleness? Because brought down how? Violently or otherwise, anyhow. But it's not always talking about being gentle. And then that 
wisdom is willing to yield, to give up. You know what the scripture says? Why would you take a man to law, to court, to the police? Wouldn't you rather be defrauded? Human wisdom does not tell you to be defrauded. It tells you to make sure that you gain your own thing. But the scripture says you can allow yourself to be defrauded and walk away from there. And Jesus takes it even further. He says a man slaps you on this cheek, turn the other side. The wisdom that is willing to yield. What kind of wisdom are you appraising with? Human wisdom or divine, godly wisdom? Full of mercy. And you know, we categorize our acts of mercy. I'll explain what I mean. I'll be merciful to this fellow, my friend, my sibling, my whatever relationship. Might even be a total stranger. I am merciful to him. But what of the man who is my sworn enemy? I'll show mercy. No, well, just take it this way. The man has just killed my son. And I've taken the son to the mortuary. And the man is making a boast about it. And on my way back from the mortuary, his son is riding a motorcycle in front of me. He falls down on the third road, on the surface of the road. Wow! Will I stop to help him? Will I show mercy? He has just killed my son, and I am coming from the mortuary where I deposited my son in my tears, and I see his son in that situation. Will I show mercy? The wisdom of God. Because I will tell you what kind of wisdom you have. You will even thank God that you have seen his son also die. You will be so happy that the son will die. As a matter of fact, if it were possible, you would stop anybody that wants to help him so that he will die. And the father will cry like you are crying. That's not the wisdom of God. That's the wisdom of men. And then he says, it's also full of good fruits. Well, the fruits of the Spirit. Love, long-suffering, name it Galatians. You see all of the nine aspects of the fruit of the Spirit, which is the kind of fruit that we are supposed to come up with. It's your wisdom in that direction. Or your wisdom is the contrary direction of the fruit of the Spirit. As you finish, look at that book of the Galatians and see if that's the kind of fruit that you produce in you. Without partiality, whom do you prefer above the other? As a matter of fact, some parents get to the point of preferring one child above the others, or some against the others. We have this partiality towards the people that we relate. You prefer one above the other, those kinds of situations. But that's not the wisdom of God. In the wisdom of God, every soul is a soul. Every person is a human being. Every person is recognizable. In the wisdom of God, a man is understood according to his own situation and circumstance. In the wisdom of man, you judge people by your own sense. You want everybody to be like you. And that's where partiality will come in. And that's where you differentiate one from the other. We need the wisdom of God so that we can deal properly with everybody. And it is without hypocrisy. We don't even need to belabor the issue of hypocrisy. It's all over. Everything. You are, you are an hypocrite here. You are an hypocrite there. You do the thing in pretense. Just to make the other fellow go along with you. You pretend so much so that you can get what you want to get. And as soon as you have gotten what you needed, you turn to a different thing. And as our people will say in the local parlance, when you've gotten what you wanted, you turn tiger. But when you were looking for it, oh, you were so humble. You are like a dove, harmless as it were. All of that with some thinking up there about what you will do as soon as you succeed. And anyway, as soon as you succeed in getting what you wanted, you will do exactly what you thought, even worse than what you thought. Hypocrisy is not the wisdom from God. In the end, what do we need? The wisdom of God. Why? Because the wisdom of men will save you in this world, yes? There's no doubt about that. You might call yourself successful by the wisdom of this world. 
but it is not first of all gaining you the goodness of God upon this earth, neither is it gaining you the direction of God in the face of your life. And it definitely puts you out of heaven. In effect, you are heading for hellfire. We need to pray for the wisdom of God. We need to function in the wisdom of God. And when we do, the things of life will yield to us because we'll be functioning from the direction of God, direction of the Holy Spirit. And we'll live peaceably in this world. And then, very importantly, have our mansions in heaven. And my prayer is that all of us can get to that point. Let's pray for heavenly wisdom. The scripture says, whoever lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Who gives freely without holding back? Ask of God today, he will give you wisdom. And live by that wisdom, it will be well with you. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.